the recommendations of the Personalized Medicine Conference and the Forum have already been taken up in our proposal, in the Commission's proposal for Horizon 2020, the next framework program for research and innovation. Um, issues such as understanding health and disease are completely relevant for personalized medicine. The goal being to move from the medicine today um, that uh, is more phenotypical to uh, the molecular medicine that is the basis for first stratified and then personalized medicine. Uh, other issues that have been incorporated uh, in Horizon 2020 are directly relevant uh, for personalized medicine, for instance, design for clinical trials. We would like to have a, a much uh, better approach to address uh, groups of individuals and individual needs rather than diseases. Uh, so uh, many of these issues have been taken up, but obviously uh, the big part that uh, stands uh, in front of us after uh, these findings will be put forward from the various programs and projects would be their implementation to the patient. The idea of an era net of the joint programming uh, at this point seems premature in the absence of the member states having definite plans in the area of personalized medicine. Nevertheless, should that be the case uh, and member states uh, come up with the idea uh, of um, a topic or an era net or, uh, uh, or a joint programming in this particular area, we would be very happy to entertain the idea but again, it has to be based uh, on um, the initiative of the member states, uh, on concrete plans of what they're going to address uh, under uh, that collaboration, uh, and uh, obviously uh, with the alignment with what is already done uh, by us uh, in uh, our various programs, both current and what is planned for Horizon 2020. Um, we do believe that these initiatives uh, are very complementary uh, and they are uh, in fact addressing various aspects of personalized medicine. Uh, taking for instance our international initiative in rare diseases, um, that has been conceived um, because of the small number of patients that are in fact uh, affected by these diseases in every country because the resources are very scarce and because the expertise uh, is very scarce uh, in, in these areas. And I'm very happy to say um, that now we do have 33 committed members uh, of the International Consortium in Rare Diseases uh, that um, a strategic research agenda uh, is being drafted that the policy and guideline documents have been put forward at the first conference of ERDIRC. So uh, we are moving uh, in this direction. And it's not, uh, it's not a consortium that can be uh, seen in a void. We do have also international initiatives in the epigenome, in cancer genome, in metagenome. Uh, so uh, all those are, are forming a universe, if you wish, uh, of initiatives uh, that are all moving towards personalized medicine. Last but not least, in our Innovative Medicine Initiative, which is a public-private partnership with the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations, um, the uh, more than 37 projects that are now ongoing address different aspects that can be um, put under the banner of personalized medicine, being a better stratification of, of patients, being um, uh, techniques to address, um, to identify groups of patients that uh, mostly benefit from a therapy or another, and so on and so forth. So uh, all these activities are very, very complementary with each other, um, and we are looking at them uh, as a portfolio. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the new world and the, the new way of performing clinical trials uh, and on gathering information. Uh, already we are prepared 
for uh, this new era, we are actually again catalyzing the involvement of patients uh, at all levels uh, into um, the activities that we are putting forward. Uh, from the very general, for instance, we do have representatives of patients' organization uh, that have been part of our advisory group throughout the program, and we do hope to see them uh, on our advisory groups for Horizon 2020. And going all the way to the implementation of the projects. Um, you might be familiar with the fact that in our calls for proposals, in the topics for clinical trials, for instance, uh, we are highly encouraging the investigators to involve patients in the clinical trial design, in the endpoints uh, that are put forward and so on and so forth. So uh, we are very active uh, in bringing the patients together. Uh, if we are looking at our international initiatives, for instance, in the International Initiative for Rare Diseases, the large patient organizations are members of the executive committee um, and they are very actively participating in shaping the policies uh, of the consortium. first involve them. Uh, uh, typically they are not uh, involved in these stakeholder consultations. Um, uh, obviously the, the decisions uh, for payment are taken at the individual member state level and, and while uh, there are fora where the payers uh, are exchanging information among themselves, it, it is relatively uh, less frequent to have uh, stakeholders consultation where all the layers uh, of the cycle uh, from basic research and to the payers are involved and I think that uh, starting um, a very systematic dialogue uh, from the very beginning uh, would be very very important. Personalized medicine, one of the um, one of the issues uh, that one can put forward is that at the beginning uh, of the idea of personalized medicine, everyone believed that it's going to be extremely expensive, both to, uh, to, to bring it to life and then to implement it. And if we are seeing the few examples of where personalized medicine is in fact implementing, for instance, the INCA program in France, um, uh, that particular program completely dispels this myth uh, that personalized medicine is going to be expensive. Why? Because with a screening program uh, of about 1.5 to 2 million euros, we have proven savings of more than 30 million euros uh, in, uh, uh, in the fact that patients that would not benefit from the therapy would be given uh, a drug that is expensive, that may create adverse effects, uh, and only by targeting the patient, and we do already have very significant um, economy of scale. Thinking also at the fact that the patients that would have received a drug that would not be efficacious for them would have adverse effects, would be further, uh, if you wish, taken, uh, have sick leave or so and so forth. All that has to be taken into consideration as large economies um, and, and in fact shift the discussion from it's going to be very expensive to where is the balance. It's going to be very much about personalized medicine because if we are starting with understanding health and disease and changing the, the definition of diseases, we will have to go through the entire innovation cycle and change the way we have done business for very, very many years. So um, um, I wouldn't exaggerate saying that at the end of the day, uh, being at this cusp of how medicine will be performed, it, Horizon 2020 will be all about personalized medicine. Uh, from very basic uh, understanding of disease and to healthcare and health systems and how we are going to deal uh, with these changes, both uh, in the population, in the expectations, in the technology, but also uh, in, um, in diagnosis, hopefully prevention and cure. 
Uh, I still think that the biggest challenge is the implementation. Uh, so, um, uh, I would encourage the participants uh, to look for successful models that um, can be used for other fields of activities. We do have just a very, a relatively few number uh, of examples such as that one that I've just gave uh, with the cancer screening program in France. Uh, but uh, put forward this economic modeling. Look at, uh, in fact, what are the benefits for the patients of shifting towards personalized medicine and bring the evidence that will convince the politicians, the taxpayers, the finance ministers uh, that this is a way to move forward.